Hey there guys, it's friends Vanguard here, and welcome to this next episode of Let's Play SpongeBob SquarePants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Uh, last episode I, uh, talked, I went on a whole bunch of different tangents, kind of related to SpongeBob, sometimes about Viacom. But, uh, in this episode we'll kind of be continuing that, except I don't know exactly what I'll be talking about. I'll try to keep it away from random rambling, but... Hopefully we'll get as many uh, jellyfish and doubloons as we can here in the high-rise section. Because I believe that's all we have left for uh, well, what we can get right now in downtown Bikini Bottom. After that, I think we'll head on over to Sandy and see what we're supposed to do over there. Nope. Too late. Oh, there's another jellyfish flying around over there. No... No. While we're doing this, we do have that happy music playing again. Uh, it's been quite a while since I recorded the last session, and in fact, uh, I know there's been some hiccups in recording. Because internet's been going down, software's been crashing, computer just generally hasn't been running all too well. Plus, uh, personal obligations have gotten in the way. And so, because of all that... You might have noticed it'll have taken effect by the time this goes up. Got that jellyfish. It'll have taken effect by the time this goes up, but I'll be needing to change the upload schedule. Instead, it's instead of being five times on all weekdays, it's just going to be three times a week: Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And that it'll be especially important since I have classes coming back up uh, less than a week from the time I'm recording this episode, and certainly they'll have already started by the time this goes up. Will it? Yeah. Yeah, it will. In fact, if things go as planned, this might be releasing the day that my first classes are. But that's not exactly relevant right now. Well, kind of relevant. Only on the day this goes up, though. Not in the future. So we'll come over here, sneak up on the shellfish so we don't fly away. They have a whole lot of extra buildings up here that, um... You weren't expected to deliver food to. I guess that's a little bit of detail. Nice detail that they don't just have... They don't just end at uh, the buildings that you have to go to. The, can you ima Oh, gosh. You can, hit, you can hit those, but I don't think you can kill them. I think you can just... Yeah, have them go back into their shells. Can you imagine how difficult it would be to climb up here with um, that food? There's only two letters left for this area. Not bad. Whoa! Oh, that better than I thought. I was going to say let's zip line down that thing, but uh, we'll have to climb back up there real quick. I'll probably just cut to where I'm up there. All right. So now let's take the zip line, except I probably should have walked across. Nah, turned out well in the end. I was going to say I should have walked across those hanging towels. Oof. Oh, they're bouncy. What do you know? This must be quite a tightly drawn rope to be able to bounce SpongeBob like this. Instead of just having it sag. And I don't know what those towels are made of, but also SpongeBob should definitely fall through them. What does that do? Oh! Oh, just go up without me. Alright then. Take two. Gotcha. The platforming is a little bit awkward in this game, mainly be not help, certainly not helped by the lack of camera control in some areas like this, but um, it's also not helped because because uh, SpongeBob's shadow is very light, and usually a shadow is a really good way to help tell your position in 3D platforming. Oh, that's on fire for some reason. So let's get away from there. Oh, you're just going to take me halfway? Alright then. What? Trash is getting thrown out of that window. That's illegal, man. Or sir. I don't know which one you are. Did I get that? Yeah, I did. So the only thing we have left to do here is, uh... No, not Bikini Bottom. 
So the only thing we have to do here to be able to find the Dutchman's treasure is, um, yeah, is help Sandy uh, clean up the trash. We're close to being done with this area. Let's see if we can get all these doubloons. I still haven't found that, uh, the, the remaining doubloons and jellyfish in, uh, Bikini Bottom. I, I seriously think they'll have to spawn in later. Either that or I'm just blind as a bat. I know bats aren't blind, but it's an expression. Ma'am, don't let her. Alright, so now that we're up. Well, there's a jellyfish up there. And he wants to stay up there. There we go. Now, we got Jug. There we go. Wow, that... Oh, wow, that's surprisingly high up. Burn SpongeBob's butt. And I'll climb back up just to make sure I uh, didn't miss anything. No, it doesn't look like it, so I'm just going to bounce across. Never mind. Oh, just go through the towels, SpongeBob. So I'm going to bounce off of these uh, towels so I can get over here, and then. There should be another zip line that I can take right here. Is that all the jellyfish? Oh no, I've got everything. What do you know? So, well, everything except for that last uh, piece. That uh, last letter. And it says we have to uh, help Sandy clean up trash. Well, in case you've been paying attention. The problem is, Sandy's still in her tree dome. So, I think that's, yeah, business district. That's what we'll go do. That, that thing just plummets like a rock. I will say, well, since I was uh, just kind of rambling absentmindedly while trying to collect all the coins and jellyfish, I was really worried that there was just going to be some off-handed area with, or some area off to the side where I wouldn't realize um, I had missed something. But fortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. I might have done so in Bikini Bottom, though. As I said, we'll figure it out later. Okay, so now we're back over here. As you can see, I, just, I changed back into the normal Swantrop uniform, because we might have to break some stuff. Sandy needed, um, after we plugged up the hole, she said she needed something. And we already bought this acorn, so we'll just take it on over to her. Sorry, acorn. We'll take it on over to her. And I, I just changed into the normal Swantrop attire, first of all, because it fits most appropriately. And second, we might need to break some stuff. I really can't remember. Gonna say something? No, you're just gonna walk out. This one try to drop this over here for some reason, so. No, that doesn't break. I was gonna be pissed if it did. Tarnation! All those holes in my dome made this place wetter inside than out. I could sure use something special to spruce up this old tree. Well, how about this? Hey there, SpongeBob. Back so soon? What you got there? Well, I. I just thought you might like this. It's a really weird acorn that makes funny noises when you shake it. Maybe you can use it as a decoration for your tree. Why, isn't this the fanciest doohickey you ever done saw? This will look great on top of my tree. Hold on a sec while I put it up there. SpongeBob! This is no acorn! Get up here right away! That was very quick. Apparently, she just walks in the front door and immediately teleports upstairs. Will we do the same? But we need to go through a loading... Yep, we need to go through a loading screen to get to it. Sandy has a high power processor, though. She doesn't need a loading screen. And so, now we're trying to climb our, our way up the tree dome. As you can see, SpongeBob is still uh, dripping, even though we're out of what would be wet. Also, uh... Well, you'll see in a second. You can probably already see. What seems to be the problem, Sandy? Nah. That acorn you gave me is nothing more than a hive filled with angry bees and wasps. Now someone has to get to the top of the tree and get it down. Let me guess. That someone is bright yellow and kind of square. Okay, I'll see what I can do to get the hive out of your tree. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, obviously, that, uh, that no, that, uh, wasn't 
an acorn, it was a beehive. Or wasp. Well, it looks like a beehive. Wasp hives don't look like that. And, uh, so now we have to deal with it. By collecting the bees and knocking down the hive. Though, it begs... Why did I press pause there? Though, it begs the question, um... Uh, why didn't Sandy recognize that before? Like, she recognizes acorns. And... Since she's a land creature, she would also recognize... No, Sandy. No! Don't restart the music. She would also recognize uh, wasps and stuff like that. Bees and wasps. She should have recognized immediately what it was. And she... Like, obviously, she would know what an acorn is. So, as you can see, there's sap coming out of these trees. And apparently, they push you down. I never realized that before. I thought they just slowed SpongeBob's movement down. Like, uh, they do in Mario Galaxy. But no. They kind of push him around. Oh, and could kill him. Interesting to note. So obviously, uh, you would catch these bees with the jellyfishing the net. And I think there's a tent up here that we can switch to at some point. They hurt you, though, if they come close to you. They can Well, the wings look like make them look like bees, but uh, the general coloration, it makes them look, plus the stingers on them, makes them look a bit more like uh, yellow jackets to me. Oh. Combine that victory music with the... With the game over music, I guess. Not really game over, but you know what I mean. These leaves don't bounce you like they do, even though they make a weird sound. Oh, come on. Apparently, dying refills uh, your pants, though. Just realized that. No? Jump up there, SpongeBob. Like I said, I really like uh, a few episodes ago. I really like this level because. Uh, I don't know, something about just climbing around a big tree just always fascinates me. Oh, there's another uh, game that has you going around a big tree, probably for a very small section, but and they do that in uh, Skyward Sword, and that's another section I like a lot in that game. I'll be an apologist for that game. I'm, I'm pretty much an apologist for all 3D Zelda games. I'm the biggest apologist for, not, for Ocarina of Time, but I like all 3D Zeldas. And so, do we have a... No, we don't have a collection thing for the bees. We just have to do it. So we'll get rid of all the bees. Just make them turn to ash in midair. Kind of brutal. Also, these nets, in real life, they're designed to catch... Well, first of all, they're not nearly as um, perforated, I guess. It's much more closely knit in real life, but these are designed to catch butterflies, which wouldn't harm you. Even if you were, uh, if you were to swing this at a bee, they would attack you. Bees normally don't attack humans unless provoked otherwise. But I'm pretty sure swinging something at them would provoke them. So we'll just change into SpongeBob's uh, normal net so we can take out two birds with one stone. Oh, never mind. Please spawn me back up there. Nope. You can hop on mushrooms over here, though. That's kind of interesting. Oh, and you also climb around giant trees in uh, Mario Galaxy. I guess there's a whole bunch of games that just have uh, big trees in them that you go around. And uh, none none were coming to my head uh, when I was mentioning it. All I could think of was, uh, like I mentioned, the ROM hack of Mario Star Road. Let's not fall down this time. Let's catch that bee. Sandy mentioned uh, that there were wasps in there, but, like, I... Ugh, dang it! S Sandy mentioned there were wasps in that hive, but, uh, I don't see any right now. They might pop up later, but... First of all, they wouldn't share anything. Like I said, they have different hives, plus, I think wasps are very territorial creatures, which is why they'll attack you for no good reason. I don't know the manners of, uh yellow jackets, though. Even though they're very common in my area. So much so that they became the Georgia Tech mascot. Fortunately, the bees in here are about as intimidating as uh, the yellow jackets team in real life. Though I shouldn't really be making fun of them, because I think we, we, being UGA, lost their game to them last year. 
Hopefully we'll do better this year. I really hope we do better this year, because it's always embarrassing to lose to Georgia Tech. I can understand, we can understand losing to Auburn or Florida, especially Florida, because, face it, they're good. But, uh, Georgia Tech, I'm sorry, they're not very good. So we, if we knock down this beehive, get off of it, and it'll fall right off. And our things will float in midair. You can see some weird glows here, too. I guess that's supposed to be like sunlight coming through. I don't know. Like I said, this area is just very pretty. Plus, uh, the multicolored leaves falling off. Just very interesting. So, what do we do over here? Let's wait to say this room. We'll go up. Just in the same way. Leave some puddles below the platform somehow. We'll jump on this bed. Sandy, you need to... Oh, I can't move the camera in here. Sandy, you need to get that fixed. If something's shining that bright on you, I guess it helps if... Um, I guess it helps to wake up in the morning, but... Like, that would just be blinding. I used to have that uh, issue in my room. I mean, not like... Not the shine, light shining directly through the ceiling like that, but... Uh, my bed was positioned in such a way that uh, no matter what happened, the light would shine directly in my face on um, at 7:30, which wasn't a big deal when I had school. But during the summer, it, well, it didn't really became that much of an issue because I like to wake up early, anyways. But the point still stands: I couldn't sleep in it even if I wanted to. Hey, what do you know? There's only a very minuscule loading screen there. So much so that it doesn't even cut off the music. So let's see what Sandy had to say uh, about us knocking down the hive. Uh, well, that hive is out of your tree, so, um, no hard feelings. Right. That's a good start, but now I've got all these stinging varmints flying around in here. Round them all up. If you do a good job, I might even have a reward for you. So about that. I think I already got all of them. Unless there's some more Those downstairs. Those bees and wasps aren't going to leave on their own. Round them all up. I remember sh the way she's always said that, round them all up. It's, I don't know, it's just always sounded a bit odd to me. So let's make sure we didn't miss anything. We'll double check. And, it, and if not, there's probably some more down at the bottom. But We'll double check up here first. Like I said, I think there are wasps. Like actual red wasps. They might be on the downside, though. And I think appropriately enough to actual wasps, if I'm remembering correctly, they will attack you for, like, they'll hunt you down. Because that's just what wasps do. Let's see. Oh, I can hear some. Yep. What do you know? Those do look like wasps, and I hate them. Capture three bees or, bees or wasps. So we only have a couple down here. So we'll collect this E. And now we only have a few. Wow, we've almost cleared out the tree dome. I guess we did do most of it the first time around. Frolic through all the flowers. That's the first step to having fun. I think I already made that joke, but oh well. And here's the last wasp. So now we'll go back up to Sandy. I'll meet, I'll just meet you guys up there. There are no more stingy thingies in your tree dome, Sandy. That was some mighty fine wrangling, SpongeBob. I'm going inside my treehouse for a rest. See you later, SpongeBob. And so Sandy leaves us a letter and runs away. Back up the tree dome. Unfortunately, before we could see her have to make those jumps. Then again, if we did have to follow her up there, they'd probably just have it be like what Princess Zelda does at the end of Ocarina of Time, where Link has to jump across pits, but Zelda just floats across them, because... I don't know. To be fair, she is magic in that game. She does have magic abilities. And Link can float across platforms too, just not with his regular shoes. But we'll come over to this tent over here, unless I walked right past it. I, in fact, did. Walk over here and get rid of the happy music. Go back to our normal music I guess this mute well it's kind of happy just not in the same cheerful way as uh, the first one but we'll go up to Sandy's room see what she has to say 
Yeah. Oh, SpongeBob. Wow, he even has a different uh, move there. Can he attack? Hmm. Is there a way to. No. Let's try again. Go, Mistress of Mayhem! How long did you think you could hide in here? Prepare yourself for another defeat! Is that supposed to scare me? I've been practicing since our last match, and I've learned some new moves. Now pay attention. We've got a short amount of time to bust up all this junk in my treehouse. The one who breaks the most stuff when time runs out is the winner. Now here are some advanced moves. Hold the duck button, then press the action button to strike in all directions. You got all that? Ready, set, go! Excuse me. Oh, Sandy might actually win this one if I keep on goofing around. I suppose I should, oh... Oh man, she's actually winning. I suppose, oh, while I'm mentioning that, uh, something interesting is that, um, uh, supposedly, well, not even supposedly, it's very clearly a reference, one of the moves that Spongebob does is a reference to, and this is a reference to Street Fighter, if I'm remembering correct, the name correctly, because I don't play that much Street Fighter, as it... By that much, I mean I've only played it a couple times in an arcade. But the point being, uh, supposedly one of SpongeBob's moves in this is based off of um, a move that I think M. Bison has called like Psycho Cut or something like that. I might be remembering it. If I'm remembering either the name of the character or the move wrong, I'll put it on screen. And like, um, it's a direct reference, not only because it looks exactly like it, but supposedly in the move list, which I've been trying to find, but I guess. Maybe it's just like in the programming. Oh, we completed the tree dome. Except for what we're about to get. But except for, um... <sighs> Must contain immense karate powers. Well, shuck, SpongeBob. That was some tussle. Oh, and we got the letter, so here we go. As I was saying, um, it's very clearly a reference because in the move list, which, like I said, is probably in the programming, not in the actual game itself, it is called uh, the same thing as the move from Street Fighter. Just a little interesting note. Which makes sense, because, uh, this, what, this game must have been developed in the early 2000s, late 90s? And Street Fighter, I mean, it's still kind of big today, but, like, Street Fighter was big back then, from what I understand. I can't say that with utmost certainty, because, uh, I was born in 98, I have very little memories from back then. I have no memories of the 90s. So I certainly can't say it's Street Fighter. So I certainly can't say if uh, I knew that Street Fighter was popular or not. Excuse me, Sandy. And so, uh, yeah, that was a very simple puzzle. Those slider puzzles are really easy. That one was even easier than the first one, I think. It wouldn't be uh, as difficult if they didn't have the borders very clearly done. I'm not getting a sense anywhere. Oh, well. Oh, I... The picture was supposed to be around here, but I forgot. Oh, now I'm getting a rumble. Yeah, I didn't even bother the picture because I was looking at the picture because I was talking. In retrospect of editing, editing the first time we did one of these uh, treasure hunt... I saw it up there. In retrospect of editing uh, the first treasure hunt, the episode with the first treasure hunt, I noticed I walked past that thing like five different times and it was clearly on screen and I just didn't notice. There we go. Alright. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show off that move that Sandy was talking about. That, uh... That, uh... Be in all directions thing. Because it kind of sucks. Uh, oh, come on down. Oh, that was close. I wasn't able to show that off. But, hey, no biggie. Let's get to the treasure. And see what's inside. But my yard sale is over. You should have shown up on time if you wanted to buy something. I never buy what I want. I just take it. And you're what I'm here for. Another member for my ghostly crew. But according to my book on evil spirits, the Flying Dutchman is only supposed to take the ones who disturb his rest. 
But that little snail feller is working out so well, and my old crew is so lazy. Can't we overlook that rule just this once? Just think how nice it will be when you're a member of the Dutchman's crew. So SpongeBob apparently went back to his room, and obviously the Flying Dutchman just nabbed Squidward, and they actually kind of addressed the plot hole that the plot hole that I was wondering about a few episodes ago about why he was taking um, people other than Gary. Well, well, we'll continue working on that stuff uh, next episode. We're running up on time on this one. You know, why don't I? Yeah, I'll just save there. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.